Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And today I want to talk about 12 of the best weapons as of patch 1.03. Of course, the patch dropped a little while ago and some weapons that were previously on the uh, lesser end of the spectrum received some buffs. Some weapons were just broken and then fixed and some weapons have just remained strong. So given that, of course, patch 1.03 dropped a little while ago and the next patch could drop at any point now, it could drop tomorrow, it could drop next week, it could drop further out. I thought it'd be fun to round up 12 12 of the best weapons in the current patch and then of course as and when things do change we can update this list of course this will not be every single weapon i'm sure there'll be weapons that you think are fantastic that should be in this list in fact if there are by all means let me know in the comments down below i can't necessarily cover all bases because of course i'm only spec certain ways but this is still a list of fantastic weapons that if you haven't tried them haven't picked them up you definitely should do so if you guys do enjoy this a like would be super appreciated comment down below if you have any questions and of course don't forget to keep it locked for plenty more elden ring so let's kick things off with Hand of Melania. One of the weapons that I just enjoy using partly because it is a sign of victory against that annoying boss, the boss that took me many, many hours to defeat. Honestly, that was quite the battle, but thankfully off the back of that, you do get a fantastic weapon, a fantastic Dex Katana. Hand of Melania is this awesome looking blade that scales primarily on Dex, also secondarily with Strength. It does have a pretty high requirement of 48 dex and 16 strength, although by the time you get to fight Melania, you'll probably be more than specced for that already. But this does have some incredible damage potential, and of course it does also have the fantastic unique skill, which is Waterfowl Dance. Perform a series of one-footed leaps in the manner of a waterfowl to unleash a swift yet graceful slashing combo, and repeated inputs allow for up to two follow-up attacks. This is the signature move that you will have had inflicted upon you, but this can also deal incredible damage. If you are specced for this nicely, if you have your build and you are leaning into the correct stats, this can do some meaty damage both to enemies in PvE, but also if you go in PvP and you get people caught with this, ooh, that is a nightmare. Don't forget as well that of course being a katana, this does come with native blood loss buildup, not necessarily as high as some other weapons, but given the frequency that you attack, this is also a blood loss beast. Next up on the list, we have Mogwin's Sacred Spear. This, of course, is a fantastic, I mean, surprise, surprise, it's in the name, a great spear. It is a huge weapon, and again, it is also another sign of victory from taking down Mogwin. This also causes bloodless buildup. This scales primarily on strength and arcane, but of course, also with dex, having a requirement of 24 strength, 27 arcane, and 14 dex. Of course, in light of patch 1.03, Arcane has been fixed, so a lot of the Arcane weapons have come back, and oh my goodness, these things are spicy. This one has a fantastic unique skill, Bloodborne Ritual, where you raise the Sacred Spear and pierce the body of the Formless Mother. You stab up to three times, creating explosions of blood with each thrust. This skill will then coat the armor with Blood Flame for a while. So of course, not only is it a fantastic buff for the weapon, but this is also a nice one for taking down large groups of enemies. Fantastic for farming if, say, you don't necessarily have the final boss weapon to make farming incredibly easy. This is a good way to basically tag a ton of mobs. So you can then of course go and do a nice cheeky rune farm. But it also has some nice damage potential. It's a really cool looking weapon as well. Honestly, I do love the design for this thing. It is meaty, it is huge. And if you are spec for arcane, this is 100% a weapon you do not want to sleep on. Moving on from there, we then have the Magma Blade. This is a curved sword, a slashing type weapon, a fantastic weapon. It looks really, really cool. Like the glowing blade, the whole sort of glowing flaming Magma Blade just looks hella cool, especially if you happen to get two of these. This, of course, is a weapon that, uh, you know, does have a pretty rare drop, but if you do get it, it is awesome. You have the unique weapon skill Magma Shower, where you slash at foes in a twirling motion while scattering magma all around. So of course this lays things all on the ground, which in and of itself can do some nasty tick damage. And additional inputs allow for a follow-up attack. So it's a nice, quick weapon that has the ability to inflict constant burning. And with scaling in both strength and faith with a little bit more in dex, this is actually a really, really nice weapon for some of the faith users out there. It does have a requirement of 15 dex, 16 faith, and 9 strength. Again, we've done a video on this one on the channel on how to get it. So if you guys have not found this one, then do be sure to check out that video on the channel. Following on from there, we of course have Rivers of Blood. I appreciate by this point you guys have probably heard of this weapon so many times. But again, if I'm doing a list like this, I cannot not include it. Because if I didn't include it, 
everyone in the comments will be like, why have you not mentioned Rivers of Blood? So this, of course, is the fantastic Katana, amazing blood loss buildup, has the incredible unique weapon skill, Corpse Piler, where, of course, it forms a blade of cursed blood for repeated interweaving successive attacks. You follow up with additional inputs for further successive attacks, and this thing, as of patch 1.03 with the Arcane Fix, is disgustingly powerful. Again, I do feel like this is probably going to get tuned as of the next patch, just because of the sheer power of this thing, Honestly, this has got me through many a boss battle. I am not even ashamed to admit this thing, you run up and you just watch things die. The blood procs incredibly quickly, the blood loss just kind of kicks in, chunks away the health, and also it just looks hella cool. It is probably my favourite katana design in the entire game just because, of course, you have that incredible crimson red design. The slight sort of chips in the blade itself make it look a little bit menacing. Honestly, this is just a fantastic weapon. Following on from there, we then uh, kind of a cheap one. I'm actually going to include two weapons in this one, but basically the double whip combo. Hoslo's Petal Whip, ideally, of course, if you do the new and you complete the Jar quest line as of the 1.03 patch, you can get a second one of these. So you can have two of these because, of course, upgraded double Hoslo Petal Whips, of course, have fantastic blood loss buildup, making them incredibly good for inflicting that. The double whip playstyle, the power stancing is so potent if you guys caught our recent whip video, especially if you do change these to occult and and you then have a scaling in arcane these can do incredible damage and incredible blood loss of course if you don't have the second hoslo petal whip you can alternatively switch one of those for the thorned whip which is also a fantastic weapon i personally prefer that visually from a design point of view but these are definitely weapons that you do not want to sleep on. I feel like whips are just one of those things that I don't see enough people using, but they are so incredibly fun, allowing you to just embody the Castlevania playstyle, move around like an absolute badass, and have incredible reach, so you can engage with targets, be that in PvE or PvP, from a slightly more advantageous distance. Following on from there, we then have the Cross Naginata, which is a spear, a really, really cool weapon. Again, this one has blood loss. Look, I, I might as well be the salesman for blood loss. I like it, all right? But that's not necessarily the main reason I'm using it. This is also just a really nice spear, so you can get pretty easily in the game. It has some really good scaling in decks. Admittedly, this one I have switched over to Occult, so that I could, of course, lean more so into my Arcane build. Keep in mind, I've only got 85 Arcane here because I activated a Great Rune. Normally, I cap it at 80. But anyway, that being said, this does have some really nice deck scaling. It has a requirement of 20 decks, 16 strength. It is a nice customizable weapon because of course you can apply your own Ashes of War on this. So you can either lean more into the bleed side of things, put on some fantastic Ashes to really make the most of that. But it's also quite a nice quick weapon with some nice attacks and some fantastic range. So if you want a spear to mix things up, this is a really, really good pick. Of course, I cannot go without mentioning the Moonveil Katana. The Katana for the intellect boys out there. Basically, if you guys are specced for intellect, this is your weapon. If you want something to use basically when your spells are not necessarily your go-to, I mean, if you're going to be spell specced, you're probably using spells a lot of the time. The point is, if you want to dabble in the melee lifestyle, then uh, grabbing the Moonveil Katana is without question a must. This, of course, has the transient moonlight unique skill where you sheath the blade, holding it at your hip, and then when you follow up with either a normal or a strong attack, you draw the blade at great speed and you then fire off a wave of light. It's an incredibly cool looking weapon, but again, if you are also spec for intellect, it is also very potent. We then have the Wing of Astol, which again is a fantastic looking weapon. This one also, if you happen to have fought the boss that uh, the move is inspired from, then, ooh, I mean, being able to just pull off that move is super satisfying. This has the fantastic unique weapon skill Nebula, where you imbue the natural born's wings with magic to send forth a dark cloud of stars that lingers briefly before exploding. This, of course, is primarily an intellect weapon with a requirement of 20 int, 7 strength, and 17 dex, primary scaling in intellect followed by dex. This is considered a curved sword. It is a really cool looking weapon, but those delayed explosions make for some fantastic damage potential. You really can just set things up nicely. You can run into bosses, pull out the explosion, move around, and then just watch as the destinations chip away at the health. Following on from there, we then have the Blasphemous Blade. Partly, I like this because, yo, if any of you guys have played the game Blasphemous, that game is fantastic. I feel like it's kind of a nod to that one. But of course, this is also a really cool looking weapon in a sort of weird, creepy way. But it has the fantastic, unique skill Taker's Flames, where you raise the sword aloft to set it ablaze with Blasphemous Flames. You then bring it down to fire off a forward blast of flames, and these will also steal HP as they touch enemies. So, you can also use this to heal yourself in the process, which is mighty nice and given that of course it does attack in this sort of frontal cone you can actually catch multiple enemies with this one so it's also a kind of like a nice option for farming not necessarily as potent as other ones but it is still a pretty nice catch all weapon 
Another one that I really like in this patch, of course, is the Black Knife. This is like a weapon that for a while I was kind of sleeping on, but honestly, this has a really, really cool unique skill, which is Blade of Death, which unleashes the power of the Rune of Death to fire off a blade-like projectile. In addition to dealing immediate damage, the blade reduces the enemy's maximum HP and continues to wear down HP for a while. This is one of the weapons where at first, when you use it, you might think, ah, it does all right damage, but then when you really spec for it and you then just see that health bar start to melt away, honestly, it is hilarious. It's one of those weapons that if you are potentially struggling with enemy and maybe you need a little bit more range, you basically just want to avoid having to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them or face-to-face -face with them, then you really can just go in and kind of be a little bit cheap, throw these flames in them, run away, move away, and then basically just watch as the health bar melts. Following on from there, we then have the Giant Crusher, a fantastic strength weapon, basically all in on strength, strength requirement of 60, B scaling in strength. This thing is like a giant block on a stick. It is just a big ass stone hammer. You have the ability to put uh, your own Ash of War on this one, but of course it comes with Endure. And this thing is just meaty smashes. Effectively, if you are a full scale strength boy, you basically want to run forward and you want to unga bunga, hit things until they are dead, then you cannot go wrong with this weapon. If you really want to be an absolute badass, try to dual wielding them that is even more fun but if you're looking for something that is just big and hits incredibly hard then you cannot go wrong with this weapon and then finally to round out the list the sword of st trina of course one of the two sleep weapons in the game this has the unique skill mist of slumber where you release a faint purple mist that spreads across a wide frontwards area and this mist then inflicts the sleep ailment upon foes of course, once they are asleep and they get knocked down, they're incapacitated, that then lines them up nicely for a critical repost style attack. So you can do some really nice potent damage with this thing. It also looks really cool. And again, it's just nice to mess around with a slightly different status. So there you have it. There's a little rundown on 12 incredibly awesome, 12 of the best weapons as of patch 1.03. Again, there will be other fantastic weapons. By all means, let me know your picks in the comments down below. If you have missed our recent uploads, be sure to check out this video and keep it locked on the channel for plenty more Elden Ring.